Has anyone told you I'm an INFP or my workplace made me do this thing and I'm an ENFJ? Did you know what they were talking about? Well, if you've heard any acronym like INFP or INFJ, then you've probably heard of the Myers-Briggs Type Inventory, also called MBTI. This is a well-known commonly used personality test based on Jung's theory of personality. It uses a combination of four different dimensions being introversion versus extroversion, intuition versus sense, thinking versus feeling, and perceiving versus judging. Two of the rarest combinations are INFP and INFJ, with the N being intuition. They have plenty in common being intelligent, creative, idealistic, and so on. The similarities are so close that they're often mixed up with each other. If you've taken the test and are confused, or even just wondering whether you're an INFP or an INFJ, then you're not alone. Before we begin, we would like to make a disclaimer that this video is based on the Myers-Briggs type inventory, which is just a theory and has personality types that are just rough tendencies rather than strict classifications. With that being said, let's look at five of the most important differences that can help you tell these two personality types apart. One, analytical versus artistic thinking. First and foremost, one of the easiest ways to tell apart an INFJ from an INFP is finding out how they generally deal with information. INFJs use introverted intuition, thinking in terms of patterns and connections. Basically, they look outside in. They see the big picture, thinking about the purpose and meaning of it all, like observing a forest and looking at how parts work together within it. INFPs go with introverted feeling being guided through emotion. So looking inside out, they focus on how you feel about a thing rather than its actual purpose or intended meaning. Their focus is on individual experience, trying to organize everything according to their own ideals and values. Going back to the forest, for example, they look at individual trees and categorize them by unique features, figuring out how those features make the forest exist. Two, decisive versus exploratory. Do decisions seem like a chore, or do you want to just make a decision and get the task done already? INFJs want to and try to reach a decision efficiently. They will see a goal and pare down all the options so that they can ride Occam's razor to the finale with no perceived waste time or resources. As their satisfaction is reaching the goal that leads from making the decision, they encompass traits conducive to this, like being organized, thoughtful, strategically inclined, and observant. INFPs, in contrast, enjoy taking every option noodle possible, throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks from there. Their satisfaction is from the discussion and exploration of possibilities rather than the decision itself. Three, absorbing versus mirroring emotions. Are you like an empathetic sponge absorbing emotions from others? Do you experience them so strongly you find it difficult separating and identifying how you feel as an individual? If you do, you might be an INFJ. This makes them emotionally expressive, outwardly compassionate, and wanting to help. This tends to lead to careers in helping professions, such as psychology, therapy, social work, and counseling. INFPs are the opposite of this. They tend to conceal their emotions and are more in tune to their own feelings than that of others. They can mirror the emotions of others while remaining completely aware of their own emotions separately. They're big believers in following your heart, which is why INFPs are so drawn to art, film, literature, and other creative pursuits. Four, understanding versus validation. Do you feel a stronger need to have others get themselves or for them to get you? INFJs are the most insightful personality type, tending to crave validation from others instead of looking at themselves. They're the Sherlock's of personality types, taking enjoyment in observing, analyzing, and making deductions about other people and social situations. They want to help others realize things about themselves. INFPs are also gifted at reading emotions, except their concern and interest is in their own feelings more than those of other people. Their main desire is to feel understood. INFPs are so unique and individualistic that it can be hard for them to connect with someone who doesn't see things the way they do but people like these tend to be few and far between. Five, internal control versus external control. Another important way INFJs and INFPs differ from one another is in their sense of control. How are you with plans? 
How about when someone changes the plans or doesn't want to go along with yours? How do you react? INFJs give the impression of being neater, tidier, and put together. They are orderly and on time, finding comfort in having a plan for just about everything. They aren't rigid with their own emotions, opinions, or ideas, remaining more adaptable and open-minded. It's vice versa for INFPs. They seem easygoing, spontaneous, and laid back at first blush. But when it comes to their personal value systems, they are consistent and uncompromising. They have a rigid sense of right and wrong, trying to bend everything to their view. Now that you have some pointers on how to tell these two personality types apart, which do you think you lean more towards, INFP or INFJ? If you continue to be unsure but curious, you can try approaching a trained professional who's well-versed with MBTI to help you figure it out, or at least point you towards a reliable assessment tool.